Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our program today. And as usual, we have outstanding individuals to be on our program. I cannot contain my thrill to have found the author of Loteria. Loteria brings back a lot of memories of my childhood in living in Mexico. Loteria. And, and we're going to talk to the author. And the author is a teacher here in the Los Angeles area. And he's from El Salvador. And we're going to talk to him about what motivated him to do this book and what motivated him to uh, continue to teach, do the book, and we're hopeful that he will do more because this is just a gorgeous, gorgeous book. Renee, thank you for being on our program today. Uh, thank you for inviting me. I am so happy to be here sharing all, my story. Wonderful. Yeah, I, we want to know your story. This is what we heard today. Uh, tell us about uh, your birth in Salvador and coming to the United States. Yeah, I was born in El Salvador when I was 14 years old, almost 15. It was my, my turn and my father turn to come to the United States. My mom was already here. And, and, and she came because of the civil war in my country. And that is the main reason that my, bear, my father and I had to leave El Salvador to come to the United States, escaping the civil war in El Salvador. Did you, and remember, I, yeah, did you remember any experiences about being down there in the war zone? Yeah, I remember being there. I, re I remember going to school and to see soldiers marching everywhere. And one thing that I talked to my friends and other teachers, and they are shocked about to hear my experience but when you see something again and again and again then it's something normal so for me it was something normal to find dead bodies on the streets so when i was going to school i i usually found one or two so my friends and i uh, we jump over the bodies just to go to get quickly to school so it was to 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 that i remember like for me jumping over a dead body it was something uh common that i do i did most at one or three times so when i talk that experience to people they got shocked like oh, you jump over a dead body and i say yes it was it was there in el salvador and was no and, and and there was no another way. You have to continue your, your journey. So you have to jump over. And that happened quite, quite a few times on my way to school. So I remember uh, at night, the, uh, the shootings. I, I remember me sleeping under my bed because my parents told me when I heard shooting, the best way to protect yourself is to be under your bed and just be there praying, praying or listening to music or doing something like until the shooting, shooting was over. So those are memories that I had in my mind. So really there was no idea of like, let's keep you home to keep you safe. It was like such a long term, you still had to go to school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, going to school. Yeah, yeah, every day. Did you but talk about? Did this topic come up at school? Did there was it discussed? Was it analyzed? Oh yes, with the teachers. I remember. I was in elementary school. I remember what I, I remember. Uh, my teachers talking about to be a good citizen, to follow the rules, and what the government was asking for the people: be quiet don't say anything i remember the teachers told us uh we need to be quiet cry tell your parents not to make any noise not to go against what the government is doing because when you start doing it then the problems arrive and, and in order to stop problems in, in order to stop the soldiers or the police who come to your house or to do something to to you just follow the rules and try to be nice and humble and that was actually what the teacher was telling us at that time that to be quiet practically to to, to live your your daily life and try not to intervene with the government so I, I, according to them that was that was the best way for everybody to be safe so and that was the message that was not, that's not a, 
this is not really a topic we say here in the United States, and hopefully we keep it that way as well. When yeah. you came to the U.S., uh, you educated yourself. What made you decide to go to college and become a teacher? Uh, I remember since I was in El Salvador, my main goal was to become a teacher. I always had that since I was a small boy, and I didn't know what grade because they asked me, what are you going to teach? And I said, I don't know, but, but I want to be a teacher. So when I came to the United States and I started going to high school, my mind was already set. I want to be a teacher. And then I graduated from high school. I have the privilege to go to a four-year university in my school uh, with pay a scholarship. I have a full scholarship to go to college. And I was so excited to be there uh, and learn. And then, and then to, to study to become a teacher. And I decided elementary. Where did you, what college did you attend? I went to CISUM, California State University, Northridge. Northridge, okay. And it was something really, uh, uh, when it was my, my time to apply for a college, uh, and I saw that question about your legal status, about being a resident, and I, was, I wasn't a legal resident. And that question was really hard for me. And I was shocked, well, maybe I won't be able to go to college because they asked me if I am a resident. You just have to check yes or no. Uh, and I remember uh, my advisor at high school told me, resident means uh, that you live here. Do you live in California? Are you a California resident? Of course you are. <laughs> you live here. <laughs> your your body is here. <laughs> uh, so I said, so yes. And I went, yes, yes. So I I, I crossed. Yes. And then I was saying, so, okay, I'm a I'm, I'm a resident because I I live in Cali. And that was the advisor told me. They're they're not specifying, they're not saying are you a legal resident? They're, the question is, are you a resident of California? So yes, but those, those were the questions. When you are an immigrant, when they ask you where are you from, you you go El Salvador because that's where I am from. Like in also this question, are you a resident? So I say no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you scratch your head. It says, how do I answer this? Because of my question was about being, being a, 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 a legal resident. So I went to college with uh, without having any papers and and. I actually, I graduated from college and I didn't have any papers at that time. So I, 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 I live that experience, like being fear, like I am in college, I don't have papers. I was using a, a fake ID, uh, but uh, all of a sudden I was able to get my, my papers and to change uh, my social security into the good one uh, and to graduate and accomplish my dream. You became a teacher, and where did you get, when did the idea of this lovely book come to you? Uh, I became, I, I always loved to write. That was my hobby. When I, when I was a little kid, I was always grow, always growing and writing. And I remember for my 12th birthday, no, for, for Christmas, for my 12th Christmas, present I asked for a stapler and my and my dad and my father asked me why do you need a stapler <laughs> yeah that's why I needed a stapler to staple my books because I I, I, I love to do my books and I wanted to staple them in order to, to make my books so that was my present when I was 12th grade so I always wanted to write always 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 but when I arrived to my classroom uh, I was looking for books that reflected my culture and my students' cultures, and I couldn't find that many. So I connected my desire of being a writer and my desire, my, 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 my passion of being a teacher. So I put it, put it them together, and I started to write books for my classroom. I did like almost 80 books. Yes, for my students in the classroom. So, and those, and those books was the beginning of my career because then I met writers 
and those writers, they, they were able to see my classroom books and they told me that I have, uh, I have the passion and they could see that I could become a published writer. So I followed their steps and, and then I was able to publish my first book. So actually playing Loteria is my book number three. All right. I did a little bit of research thanks to your information. And I followed up with the information about attending the Vermont College of Fine Arts in writing for children and young adults. When I saw that, I thought, I've never heard of such a program. So I went on the internet, looked it up, and I thought, this is really a very unique program. I, I'm assuming, uh, as you were getting a master's degree from them, that you were going there, spending some time coming back, so you were transporting yourself back and forth to go to uh, Vermont College of Fine Arts? Yes, yeah, it, it is a low resident program. So mm -hmm. I, I, I was there every January, January and June. And the rest of, of, of the class was through regular. I remember when I started the program in 2003, they, they still were doing mail. I was mailing my, my work every month. And by the end, when I finished in 2005, everything was email, which is more easy because <laughs> sending everything through, through email. But at the beginning, everything was I still uh, by mail. So I have to, to take my big package of writing to the mail office and send it. But it was a, a good decision. I remember like I wanted, because being, getting published is not easy. It is really hard. You send your manuscript to a publishing house and they usually say, no, no, thank you, keep writing. Uh, uh, when you write a new story, please ask to submit them to us. So I was in that, uh, on that way and I said, what can I do? What can I do to get better? What can I do to get published? And then I found out about, about Berman College which actually was the first, uh, the first college that had this program, writing for children. Because I, I, I say, I want to take a master in writing. And I went to UCLA and to many other colleges, but the, the writing was writing, like writing a novel or writing a memoir, but it was not for children. I said, but my main goal is in children literature. And I found Vermont and said, okay, this is perfect for me because it's all about children. And right now there are so many masters. Even Loyola University now has a master's in writing for children. Wow. But, but Vermont College is the mother. It's the first one. Uh, and it is a great program. So what motivated you to say, okay, one of my three books is going to be Loteria? You know, and I, and I grew up in Tijuana. I grew up in Mexico as a child. Even though I was a U.S. citizen, I had to cross the border every day. And, of course, Loteria is very much part of the culture. Um, what motivated you to do Loteria? Uh, but my big mo motivation for writing this book is also I, I love to play Loteria even in El Salvador. Mm -hmm. I, was playing, I was playing this game in El Salvador, going to the fairs, la ferias circus, a carnivals, everywhere you go in El Salvador, you will always see a, a, a puesto de loteria, and at home too. So I love playing loteria at home with my family. So when I wrote this book, I, I, everything started with the idea of a boy trying to communicate with grandma, but they did not, they couldn't understand each other because grandma speaks only Spanish and the boy speaks only English. And that was my, my story. And it actually was really hard to find a way for this mother to communicate with this child. And at first, at first the mother, the, the, the abuela, she was a piñata maker. And by making a piñata, they were communicating. I tried to, go, to do colors and sizes, but then it wasn't working. Then the abuela became an artist, a painter and they paint together, <laughs> and, the, and, and the idea was say, uh, uh, words, colors, numbers, in order to communicate, but actually my story wasn't working. And then at my elementary school for Halloween, uh, we have a Halloween carnival, and that time I was assigned to the Loteria booth. 
And I was there playing Loteria with the I say, of course, I know how to play Loteria. Loteria is something that I really like. And I remember this Korean mother came to the booth with, the, with her daughter. And the mother said, oh, this, is, this looks fun. Let's play here. And the little girl said, but mom, this is in Spanish and we don't, we don't speak Spanish. And the mother said, that doesn't matter. We can do it. So I remember this Korean mother sitting next to her daughter. I was saying the phrase in Spanish. And the mother was saying the phrase in Korean and the little <laughs> English. And then every time, la dama, and then the mother say in Korea, and, say, and I say, oh, this is magic. That's what I said. This is magic. Loteria in Korea. And, and then, uh, then it, when it click, I know. I know what my story needs. It's not the mother being a, 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 a abuela being a, a piñata maker or being an artist. She needs to play loteria. And actually, the funny of the story, I have the plot of the story, but loteria became at the very last, and now it's the title of the book. And that's how the story is. That's how it's I'd, I'd like to ask you, uh, I'm going to ask you in a few seconds about contacts with, you know, people can follow up with you and your current work and future work. But one question I do have beforehand is the artwork. It is gorgeous artwork. And I have family members that are beautiful artists as well. You know, how did you come together with the artists and sort of get the concept of what you had in your mind of the storyline and get it crossed over with the artist? Yeah, in this case, it was the publisher. A Luna Rising because uh, for writing for children is like lead, uh, it has their tricks. Uh, you write your story as, a, as an author, and then when the, the, the story is accepted for publication, now it's the publisher's turn to sign an uh, illustrator. So actually, it has nothing to do with the writer. So I remember for playing Loteria. We have an, an illustrator, Octavio, I think his name is Octavio Pérez. And he was assigned to do my book. But then it was a, a huge hur hurricane in Florida. And Octavio, he was living in Florida, and he said that his house was destroyed, and he didn't have the, uh, the time or uh, feelings to finish the book. So actually, he declined the book. So, and the editor told me, uh, Octavio is not part of the book anymore. And they found Gil, Gil Arena, which is, which is an illustrator. And it was my, the publisher and Gil working together in the story. The only question that they asked me was about the tombola, that they didn't have any idea what a tombola was. And they, and they asked me to send pictures. So, the tombola right here. So that, that, was a, that, that was the only, the only question they asked me. So it was actually my, my, my editor uh, working, with the, working with the illustrator. But I remember uh, Teresa, Teresa Howell is an uh, editor of this book. And she told me that uh, when she was young, she, she lived in Mexico City for a few months. And she, she loved to play Loteria. In my, <laughs> so my editor, she, she, wa she was familiar. She was familiar with this story. It's a, it's so a it very has, common game. I mean, you know, it, it, everyone plays it, rich or poor, no matter where you play it on the street, on the floor, everybody plays. That's what I'm saying. It's very, very central to the culture as well. Again, where can our viewers... Uh, find your information about you and your upcoming work. Okay, my information is in, on my website, renepolatolaines.com, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram. Just look for my name, Rene Polatolaines. Okay, if we look up the Loteria, will your name come up? Yeah, playing Loteria or Google or Yahoo. If, if, if you search for Rene Polatolaines Loteria, you will see it. Okay. You this book and my other books. Okay, I, if I'm asking you a trick question, you don't have to answer. What's your next book going to be? 
Actually, I have two books under contract. Uh, we call it The House. And this, this story is about two friends. One speaks English, one speaks Spanish, and they are, are able to communicate through both languages. So those are my, my next book. They're coming, supposedly they're, they were coming up in 2001, but now all the, all the publish, uh, publishing books, uh, oh, everything is stopped because of the, yes. the virus. Right. So uh, the books that were supposed to come this year, they're not publishing any, for children, they're not publishing any new books this year. So they're, they, the book for this year are, are coming next year. So I, I don't know what will happen to my book. Maybe there, there will be 2022 instead of 2021. Well, unfortunately, we're running out of time. I'm just, I'm just delighted to learn so much from you. And I'm learning not only the process of the difficulty of doing it, but also the need for a passion to do it. And it seems mm -hmm. that I don't think, from what I can tell, there isn't much that's going to stop you from continuing to do more. No, and I plan when I retire, I want to dedicate myself to, to just writing because it is really, really hard like being a teacher and being a writer and trying to do everything at the same time. So that, that has been my big challenge. So, but I'm under, I'm trying to. But I, I, I had published 12 books already. So, and with my two new ones, those will be 14. And I am working also with uh, the educational markers, writing books, and, and those are really fun. And mostly all, all, all my work for the educational market has been in Spanish. So right well, now, I have a book for a, for a reading program. I finished that, that book la last week. So I'm, I'm writing those books too. So it's really, really exciting. I love, I, I love, and especially just these books, uh, People need to buy these books in order to, to read them and have them or go to the public library. But working for the educational market, I know that those books will be in the classroom. And the teacher will read those books to the students, and the students will get those little books <laughs> and to read them. So it is exciting that to, to reach your, uh, your, your students, your teachers, in another way. Yeah. I'd like to, you know, as you were talking, I, I, I'd like to sort of ask you to answer one more question. What would be your advice to teachers who have the ability to write the stories, have the ability to, they can see the image and would like to, to follow in your footsteps? What would be your advice to them? I will give the advice that I received when, when I was a teacher trying to write. <laughs> Don't give up, try to, try to write your story. I, you, you can write it for the classroom. I remember like writing my story and taking pictures and making my, my own books. I, I have my books right here. I have a few, a few of those books here. But just uh, keep going and, and try to do your best. And if you are, right now it's so easy to publish yourself, your books. Self-publish is something that uh, through the year has become more easy to do it. When I started to publish my book, having a self-published book was a big no, no, oh, no. You, you need to, uh, to publish your book through a traditional publisher. That was what everybody was, was saying. But now it is, it is much, much easier. So you, now you can even publish your own books. But if you want to go through the traditional market, you will hear no, keep, no, keep going. Try it again and don't give up, don't give up. Because I remember uh, for my first three books, I was submitting and submitting and submitting my work and going to writing classes, writing conferences. I remember meeting Teresa, Teresa, my, my editor for Loteria. I went to, to a writing workshop and she was there. And actually she, she, she read another of my stories. I submitted another story. And when I was talking to, to her, she told me, I love this story, Renee. I can see that you have the magic. Do you have another story? And I told her, I have a story about a little boy who learned Spanish by playing Loteria. And she told me, great, send me that story. So when she said, send me that story, I sent it to her and she published it. 
So uh, I found the editor of this book by going to a conference. So if you see like conference, and here in California, there is CABE, California Association for Bilingual Education, and CABE is perfect. You will see writers and editors and teachers and everything about, about being bilingual. So that I would recommend, not going only to CABE, there is NAVE, there are so many conferences. If you're not a teacher, also there are so many conferences. The Society of Children, Books, Writers, and Illustrators, those are great. You can go through the, through the website and you can find more information there. Well, thank you very much, Rene. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking to Rene Colato Lainez about his book, Loteria. And it's not just this one book, but actually the whole series of his books and the continuation of a teacher uh, helping children to love reading, but on top of that, to see themselves, their culture in books and motivating them also to move forward to have their own books and maybe in the future so they make a connection. Uh, Rene, thank you very much for being on our program and I look forward to ha having you again on future books. Okay, thank you. Muchas gracias. <laughs>